Hi brothers and sisters, welcome to FGS UIC Sky and we are so glad that you are here with us. For the first timer, Pastor Daniel and Yip Ming would like to welcome you that you have found us. Welcome home. Welcome home. We believe that you will be truly blessed throughout the broadcast session. You have made the right choice. For our CYC English team, we, we miss you so much and we would like to encourage all of you, be the first timer or our members that please prepare your heart throughout the session. Be focused and, and you know, don't be disturbed by the surrounding circumstances and truly in the worship because He will speak to you. Though we are separated, but through broadcast, the Spirit of the Lord will anoint your family. Amen. Amen. Stay tuned and may the Lord be with you. God bless you. Hello, good morning everybody. So good to see you today. What a wonderful time to come into the presence of the Lord. Amen. How many of you, you know, are together with your families today? Why don't you turn to them and say, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, you know? But if you're alone at the laptop behind there watching this, why don't you give us a peace sign and say, Shalom. All right, yes. I mean, today, you know, we want to come into the presence of God. And while you may be seated down, maybe you're lying down, but today I want to encourage you to stand up and maybe find some space so that we can express ourselves in the, in the place of, of worship when we come before the Lord. And today we want to worship in our homes, amen. This is a wonderful time. You know, in the Psalms, it says that the Lord watches over those who love Him. And you know, today it's not just me who is watching you and you who are watching me. It is the Lord who is watching us praise the Lord this Sunday. Amen. And so when God watches us praise, let us just give our best to the Lord. Amen. So why don't we just rise and you know, you know, the psalmist says, you know, it is with my mouth that I sing praises to Jesus and we want to lift Jesus high. Amen. So we want to use this song to really lift Jesus high. And so would you repeat after me? Are you ready? Come on. We're going to lift him higher, lift him higher, lift him higher. We're going to sing louder, sing it louder, sing it louder. You try. We're going to lift him, lift him, lift him higher. Come on, you sing. We're going to sing louder, sing it, sing it louder. One more time. We're going to lift him higher. See it coming, the wave of His power. Come on, you won't find me running, cause this is the hour. I am going deeper to places that I've never been. I believe and I believe greater to see things that I've never seen. Let's put our hands together, come on.
I miss you being together in church together and you know standing next to you and lifting up our hands but today you know this will have to do but that's not gonna stop us from being in the presence of God amen you know when Jesus was leaving his disciples he turned around to his disciples and said I may be physically going away I may be separated from you physically but I will not leave you as orphans because I'm giving you myself I will send you a comforter. I will send you a helper. His name is the Holy Spirit. And today, Jesus can live in us. And the Lord can actually be in us through the Holy Spirit. Amen? And He has a language sometimes that we cannot express in English. And when we do that, we actually uh, activate or there is, that is the evidence that He is with us. So today, if you're watching, you know how to pray in the Spirit. And maybe you carry a heavy burden in your heart. Or maybe you carry a worry or you carry just the, just the normal, mundane, uh, every Sunday mood. But today, in our hearts, shall we just lift our hearts to the Spirit of God? And let the Comforter, let the Holy Spirit come and be our best friend. You know, He can come and sit next to us. He can come and whisper to us the wisdom that we need. He can come and whisper to us the joy and the comfort that our heart may need in a time like this. And so let's just spend some time just singing praises to Him. This is a song called Holy Spirit, My Best Friend. But before that, let's just spend some time worshipping in a new song. And lift up your hands today and sing in the Spirit. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Shama mama 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 Shira mama 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 Hallelujah Lord you are our best friend today Let's sing this together Holy Spirit Holy Spirit All my fountains are in you Jesus Spirit, a true friend I found in you. Springs of love, joy and peace you bring your life in me. Patiently you will You're so kind, so good and faithful to beat and bridle in my flesh gently lead me to you. Shall we lift up our hands? And sing this song together. Let's sing My Best Friend. friend 
Come on, church, let's give a big clap to Jesus. Let's sing this one more time. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, all my fountains are in you. Jesus, Spirit, a true friend I found in you. Springs of love, joy and peace you bring. Your life is your voices come out.
Holy Spirit, we thank you for your presence in our hearts today, in our homes today. And for some of us, Lord, we have no one to turn to. We cannot turn to some of the people who are even closer to us because, because there's some things in our hearts that we carry that we just cannot share. But today, Lord, Holy Spirit, you know everything. You know the beginning. You know the end. And we cannot hide from you. And you see everything in our hearts. And today, we lift our, heart, our hearts before you. We live our lives before you. And in worship, we give you everything. Our ups, our downs, our happiness, and even our sadness. We thank you that you are a friend that always listens and always comforts. And more importantly, you're always with us. So Lord, we thank you. Lord, we ask that your Holy Spirit will continue to be with each and every one of us. Lord, also send your Holy Spirit to those whom, those who are far away from us, our family members who are far away whom we love. Send them your Holy Spirit as their guide, as their protector, and also their wisdom in a time like this. We thank you, Lord, for your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Amen, church. If you're blessed today, you want to give Jesus a hand. He's watching. Let's give him a big clap. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Amen. Shalom Church. How are you this morning? I'm so excited to be with you again via this Sky Church meeting. And my prayer is that through this Sky Church, through this broadcast, you will be blessed. You will be blessed by His words. You will be strengthened through His Holy Spirit so that you could have the faith to keep on moving no matter what type of circumstances you are in right now. Amen that church. I have received a lot of powerful testimony for the past few weeks. When we have Sky Meeting like this, Sky Church like this, some of my members, the church members came to me um, through WhatsApp and phone call and shared with me how powerful the Lord had been moving through the Sky Church. And therefore, church, please, please carry a right spirit whenever you watch this broadcast whenever you worship the Lord with us together through this Sky Church meeting please be prepared as how you prepare to the physical church please have this attitude always do not just lie down there and, and wait for your pastor to preach to you but that you should be like an army of God ready to war always prepare yourself like the like the parable of the ten virgins, the one who prepare for the bride to come. Therefore, prepare that through the sky meeting like this, our dear Lord Jesus Christ, through His Holy Spirit, will come and visit you and your household. Amen to that church. So therefore, let's very quickly to go into scripture. Let's prepare and listen to the words of God. Today, I will continue from where we have started last week, which is Bad time, good time, and God's time. So we are still in the book of Exodus. Read with me, book of Exodus chapter 1, verse 22. Today, we will start with Exodus chapter 1, verse 22, and chapter 2, verse 1 and 2. Then Pharaoh commanded all his people, every son that is born to the Hebrews you shall cast into the now, but you shall let every daughter live. And chapter 2, verse 1 says, Now a man from the house of Levi went and told as his wife a Levite woman. Then chapter 2 verse 2 say the woman conceived and bore a son and when she saw that he was a fine child, she hid him three months. Who is this child? It's the baby Moses. And this Levite scarper told priests to give birth to baby Moses during the most dangerous time. Pharaoh had commanded all the Israelite son, Hebrew son, shall be killed if they were to be born during that time. Therefore, it's a bad time to give birth, church. It's a bad time for the Hebrews couple, the Levites couple, to give birth to this baby Moses. Let's say we have a time machine and that the Lord bring us back to Moses' time. Now think about it, church. I have asked a few couple on this question. Ask them, would you dare to give birth to a son if the Lord 
bring you back to Moses' time. And many of them say, almost 100% of them say, no way. No way they will give birth to a son because it's a very risky thing to do and it's a dangerous thing to do. And therefore, it's a bad time for the Levi's couple to give birth to baby Moses. And applying to today's context, when we are facing all this pandemic and crisis, both financially and physically, whereby all the nations are being locked down for not just weeks, but some could be months. Death toll rises almost every day, globally. Now, during time like this, is it a good time to give birth? Is it a good time to start a new business? Is it a good time to start your f and business? Is it a good time to open a cafe? Is it a good time to run a ministry? Is it a good time even to get married? No, it's not a good time, church. To us, many of us, we have this idea when crisis come, it's a bad time to do anything. Am I right? But let us think about how the Lord's work. Let's meditate our time when we view it as bad time. How about God? Does God view the same? Because if we read from this scripture, and if we look at this Levite's couple, it seems like, it seems like in bad time, like that for God's is a good time. It's a good time to give birth to baby Moses. Now, to God, there's never a bad time. I want you to catch this. For us as human, including us as Christians, when something bad happened, when pandemic happened, when financial crisis happened, when people start to lose the job, when all that happened, very quickly, we'll jump into a conclusion that this is a bad time. No doubt, about, no doubt about that. And it's not about right or wrong. And today, I want to help you through the revelation of the Holy Spirit. I pray that whenever you are right now, when you read at this scripture, open your spiritual eyes. Open your spiritual eyes and look deeply into this passage what the Levites couple had been gone through. Because for sure, they know that the Pharaoh had made such commandment. And for sure, during that time, there's no ultra scan when you get pregnant. There's no such thing. No technology like that during baby Moses' time. And therefore, this Levites couple is very interesting that they took the risk despite knowing it's bad time to have a baby. And it's also a bad thing to do. But then still, they carried this faith and bonus to give birth to baby Moses. Therefore, church, first of all, bad time in God's time is always good time. Not only good time, but best time. Amen? It's best time. Because for sure God know that this Levite's couple are going to give birth to baby Moses. And for sure, last week, if you listen to what I've been preaching to you, God's had His way to protect this baby Moses. So in other words, it's bad time to many of us, but to God, His time is always good time. Bad time God's time, good time. In good time, also mean best time. And from this couple, I would like you to learn their spirit in moments like this, when we are facing all the crisis, when we are being surrounded by so-called all the bad things and this bad time idea. And I pray that the Lord will speak to your heart through few points that I would like to give to you this morning. So prepare your notepad and get ready to take note. Point number one, for the world, when people thought it's a bad time to give birth 
to bad time to start something, to bad time to move on. We have to learn from this couple. It's the best time to be bold and courageous. Point number one. It's the best time for the church, for people like you and I, for Christians, to be bold and courageous. When everyone is living in fear, it's the best time for you to be like the Levite scarper, to stand up to the call. When everybody is hiding in the crisis, in the problem, when everyone is hiding in fear, you rise up to the call. When everybody is running away from their problem, from their financial problem, from the marriage problems, when people are running away from this crisis, you got to be like the Levite's couple, having the bonus and courage in you to fight back the crisis. When everybody is reacting the same way, almost everyone around us reacting the same way, which is living in fear, you react differently. You react differently and you learn from this Levite's couple to rise up and do something about it. It's not the time, not just to fear, as I, what I have preached to you. It's not the time to fear, yes, but also it's not time to hide. It's not the time to run away from problems. It's not the time to surrender your future and your family to the crisis. It's not the time. It's not the time to give up. It's not the time for you to succumb and submit your faith F-A-T-E, your faith in the hand of this pandemic and crisis. It's not the time, church, for you to bow down to problems. It's not the time for you to bow down to, to defeat, to failure. No. Instead, it's the best time for all of us, Christians, devoted Christians, church leaders, Pastors, it's the best time for you and I to be bold and take courage. It's the best time for us to face the crisis and to be different from the rest. Just like this Levite scarpa. It's the best time for you and I to be faceless and nameless. Why do I say so? Did you, did you take, do you notice that the Lord didn't mention who is this couple? Who are they? No, sometimes God purposely omit their name so that you and I, in moments like this, in bad times like this, during crisis, we could rise up. It's just like a model for all of us to learn and to follow. Because they are faceless and nameless, just like you and I. Lots of time, Christian, we would think this way. We like to think that only pastors can pray. Only pastor prayer will be accepted by the Lord. Or maybe only so-called very highly anointed spiritual man or pastor can be used by God to do certain things. Yes and no. My answer to this type of statement is yes and no. Yes, some of the men of God is being anointed to do certain things. I believe that wholly from my heart. But at the same time, there are people like you and I who are faceless and nameless, who are not gaining any popularity in, in the kingdom of God, but that they are devoted Christians like this Levite couple who being omitted of their names and stand up, take courage and take risks to give birth to baby Moses. There are people like that. And therefore, God wants you to open your eyes and learn from this couple. Why is it they are faceless? Why is it they are nameless? So that you, if this Levite couple could do the same thing during a bad time like that, you can also have such boldness and courage in your heart. Amen? So do you. You too can be like them because they are not the Moses. 
They are not the, the famous anointed prophet during that time. They are just a normal person like you who are sitting in front of the telev- television or in front of the laptop right now. Th- they are just as same as you are. Exactly the same. Therefore, let's learn from them because time like this is not a bad time. But time like this to God's time is the best time to be faceless and nameless Christians who are bold and courageous to do something for the Lord, for your family. It's the best time for you to be remembered as the one who have the bonus and took courage. It's the best time. It's the best time because church, you don't want to be remembered as the one who ran away from problem during crisis. Do you? I bet you would not want to be remembered like that. I bet, I, 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 I bet that you don't want to be remembered as the one who do nothing when your family is looking up to you as their hero of faith. You don't want to be remembered as the one who just sits at home and play games and sleep and don't bother of anything that is happening around the world and around your family. When your papa, mama, when your spouse are facing financial stress and crisis. You don't want to be remembered as the church that hide in problems. You don't want to be remembered as the leaders, Christian leaders that run away from problem. Therefore, church, it's the best time for you to learn like this Levite scarper, to rise up to the call because there are so many people looking at, at you. So take courage, make the right decision like this Levite scarper. I believe they can opt to drop off the baby when they found out that the wife got pregnant. It could be, though Bible did not record that. So put yourself in their shoes during that time. Will, that, will you think like that? Will, you, will they even have a split second of having this idea of abortion? It could be. But to them, you see, they did not because they took courage. There's so much bonus in their life. How about you, church? How about you? during moments like this? Do you have faith? Do you have bonus? Do you have courage? Because it's the best time for you to be bold and take courage and face the red sea in front of you. If you are facing a financial difficulty right now, you are so worried of your job, of your house, of your cars and everything, your children and your spouse. Now, is the time for you to rise up to the call. First thing first, before you have the solution for all the problems that you are having right now, you have to have bonus first. Bonus, courages. Because once you have the bonus and courages in your heart, once you conceive that in your spirit, the baby Moses is not necessarily a physical child in, in your life right now, but that something spiritual, you have to first conceive bonus in your heart. Then you will give birth to solution. You will give birth to revival. You will give birth to faith. You will give birth to a new anointing in your life that the Red Sea can be opened by the Lord for you. Amen. So, Talk courage. Be bold. That's the point number one. It's the best time for people like you and I who are faceless and nameless to live up to the call and be bold and courageous. Amen? Tap your heart or someone next to you who are watching this with you. It's time for you to be bold and courageous. Say to yourself, say to someone that is watching with you right now. Okay, that's point number one. Point number two. Another event, same thing, bad time. It's really a bad time and dangerous time. Exodus chapter 14, we have talked about this earlier on, whereby my sermon title and title 
facing the Red Sea. We have been reading this scripture already for quite some time, but I want you to read again today from this context. Bad time, God's time, good time. Exodus chapter 14, verse 10. It says, When Pharaoh drew near, the people of Israel lifted up their eyes. And behold, the Egyptians were marching after them, and they feared greatly. And the people of Israel cried out to the Lord. Verse 11, they say to Moses, Is it because there are no grave in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us in bringing us out of Egypt? Verse 12, is not this what we have said to you in Egypt? Leave us alone that we may serve the Egyptians, for it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptian than to die in the wilderness. Verse 13, and Moses said to the people, Fear not, stand firm, and see the salvation of the Lord, which He will work for you today. For the Egyptian whom you see today, you shall never see again. Verse 14, the Lord will fight for you and you have only to be silent. Now all these scriptures, verses, we have already dwelled in it for the past few weeks. I just want to very quickly brought, bring you back to this part so that you could understand that when Pharaoh and the army, Egyptian army, were marching after the Israelite, and then they were in a lockdown state facing the Red Sea, it's really, really a bad time for all of them. It's really a dangerous moment. Their life is at risk. Just like some of you who are watching right now. Some of you are, you know, are being locked in a financial crisis. Some of you are really being locked down in stress, depression. Some of you are being troubled, couldn't sleep at all. And because you have been filled by this idea of, God, why am I living during bad time like this? Why, why you put me in time like this? Why you allow all this? See, the Israelites are basically reacting the same. They are facing a very, very bad time and also dangerous time. Dangerous. They neither can move on because it's the big red sea in front of them, nor they could turn back. Either one, they die. They will be killed or they will be drowned in the red sea. But then, again, let me tell you, Later you see how God's work for them. Bad time, God's time is always good time. And it's always the best time. Moment like that, though it's bad time, apparently it seems to them, the Israelite, is a bad time. It seems to us, many of us as Christians, it seems to us is a bad time. But in God's time, it's always good time and best time. And what are the Thing that I want you to catch is this. Chapter 14, verse 15, reads on. The Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry to me? Tell the people of Israel to go forward. Wow, it's the best time to go forward. Say with me, go forward. See, in our human's idea, with regards of timing, it's really a bad time. It's really a bad time for the Israelites to, to move forward because it's the Red Sea in front of them. But to God's idea, when we thought it's a bad time, God's time is always a good time. And because of that, it's the best time for the church, for you and I to move forward. Here, the Lord say, why do you cry to me? It's not the time to cry, church. It's not the time to cry because by crying, your problem will not go away. By crying, your financial situation will not have a miracle. So, you are not a baby anymore. You are grown up man of God. You have been, you have been immersed in the church for so many years. And God is preparing you for a moment like this. Every Sunday you go to church, you worship, you listen to the words of God, you attend conference after conference. Do you know why? Because God is preparing you 
to rise up to the challenge and call and to move forward during time like this. That's why God has been preparing you. So therefore, church, don't cry. God say, tell the Israelite, tell the people of Israel, tell the church, why are you crying? It's not the time to cry. Crying will not solve your problem. It will not automatically lift up your financial problem. But that, the Lord said, tell the people of Israel, tell the church, this is the best time to go forward. This is the best time to move forward. This is the best time for your eyesight, for your spiritual eye, and for your spiritual feet to drive forward, church. Wow. This is the best time for you to keep on moving. Because by stopping your footstep, by moving backward, or even stop at where you are right now, you will not get rid of the problem you are facing right now. For the Israelite, if they stay, they die. Do you see that? If they stay at where they are at that moment, they die because eventually the Egyptian army will arrive because they are marching towards them and they will arrive at where they encamp. And therefore, if they stay, they die. Same goes with you, church. My dear brother and sister in Christ, or friends who are watching right now, if you stay, you die. Not physically, not necessarily physically. I'm not cursing you. Don't get me wrong. But what I'm saying that if you are staying at where you are right now financially, you will die. If you are staying at where you are right now spiritually, you will die. If you stop moving, you die. If you stop progressing, you die. If you stop working out, you die. You still need to work out at your house, your body. You still need to work out something for your business, for your career. You still need to work things out for your financial. Even though we are locked down, but that doesn't lock your spiritual life down. Amen? That doesn't lock your mind down. Stop. Enough of resting. Enough of resting. You have been sleeping for quite some time already for the past two weeks. It's time for you to move forward, church. Not the time for you to hide in your blanket. Not the time for you to hide in depression. It's time for you to rise up and move forward. Because the only way for the Israelite to be safe at time like that, critical moment, crisis, dangerous time, is to go forward. And this is not from me. So please, read it carefully. It's not, it's not from Pastor Daniel. It's from the scripture that the Lord is commanding the people, the church, to go forward. Say with me, go forward. By faith, go forward. Yes, declare that in your career, in your business, in your family, that you are going to lead them to move forward. And therefore, church, point number two, this is the best time to go forward. At the same time, this is the best time to lead. Because you need to rise up and lead. You need to lead. You need to take the lead. Like Moses, when he received the instruction to move forward, he lead the Israelites. So you need to lead your family, your children, your cell group, your friends, those who are not yet saved. You need to lead them to move forward, encourage them. If you're running a business, you need to lead your company to move forward, not stopping at where you are right now. Pray. You may ask Pastor Daniel, how? I don't know. Pray. I have my business too and my business is God's business, God's kingdom, church. I pray every day. I think every day. I meditate every day. Ask my wife. Ask my church leaders. They know. Though I am been in lockdown state, just the same as what you are doing right now, we, we could not move or do anything, but ask them, ask my wife. I've been so busy for the past two to three weeks. Though I'm in a lockdown state, we are all in lockdown state, but my spirit, Ah, moving every day. Keep moving. Driven by the Holy Spirit. Because I know if I stop, I die. 
I could not stop moving. I could not let the church stop moving in evangelism, in discipleship, in connecting with the people, in prayer. We have our sky prayer meeting last week. Wow, last two weeks. Hundreds of them attended the sky prayer using Zoom. Can you imagine that church? We cannot stop moving. It's time for us to take lead, to move forward, to face the crisis, to fight back. Amen. It's time for you and I to do something like that. And it's time for you to learn how to become a problem solver rather than be a problem maker. When the Lord told Moses, it's time to move forward, move forward, go forward. It also means God wanted to use Moses to become a problem solver because everyone is looking upon Moses. How are, now we are dying all. How are we going to solve this problem? How are we going to face this crisis? How are we going to, to, to be out from financial debt and all that? You have to have the anointing like Moses become a problem solver is the best time when we say to move forward means is the best time to become a problem solver. It's the best time for you to learn how to solve the problem rather than create more problem in your life. Don't be a problem maker. Don't be a problem maker in the church, in your family, in your relationship, in your company, in your business. You got to be a problem solver is the best time for you to do that. Amen? When the world are living in crisis, it's the best time for someone to rise up and become the problem solver. You are the hero of faith. You are the Levite scupper, faceless and nameless. People may not notice the power of faith in your life, but let it be known that God will notice that and that it will be recorded in God's history of revival. Your name will be recorded. It's okay sometimes to be faceless and nameless. What is more important is you lift up as a problem solver. And also, if you notice this, I find it very powerful when God told Moses and the Israelites, now is the time for you to move forward. When I read that, I saw God's heartbeat. I saw how the way our lords think. You know, moment like this, when everyone seems this pandemic or the crisis is a bad time to God, the good time and best time simply means it's the best time for you to have reverse thinking. It's the best time for you to have a reverse thinking in your life because God told them to move forward whereby for lots of people during time like this, people will either stop or retreat or give up or pull out. People will drop out. But God have another idea. God's idea is to move forward. God's idea is to plant a reverse thinking in Moses' mindset and in the Israelites. So the mentality of reverse thinking is very important in moments like this. Bad time. God's time. Good time. Best time. And now is the best time for you to learn to have a reverse thinking in your mentality. Because the moment you have this reverse thinking in your life, you will see a way out. Amen? You will see a way out. Wow. Therefore, if you don't move forward, you will miss the way out. You will miss out the opportunity to find the door for you to escape or to solve the problem. But if you have this reverse thinking in your mind, 
Because God is having this reverse thinking. When everyone wanted to stop or reverse or, or retreat, God said, move forward. So, are you prepared to move forward in your career, in your spiritual life, in your ministry, in your marriage? Because if you are not prepared, let me encourage you, church, time like this is the time for you to move forward. Spiritually, you have to move forward. You cannot stop at your past experience with the Holy Spirit. You have to move forward, drive yourself in the spirit of revival. Amen? Amen? Wow. I hope you are blessed so far. That's the point number two. Point number one is the best time to be bold and courageous. Point number two is the best time to move forward. And in this point number two, there are so many revelations. Become a problem solver. Take the lead. Reverse thinking. Okay? And then point number three. Exodus chapter 14, verse 16. We stopped at verse 15 right just now. So now let us go to verse 16. Then God told Moses, lift up your staff and stretch out your hand to cover the sea and divide it that the people of Israel may go through the sea on dry ground. So point number three. When the Israelite thought it's a bad time and it's a dangerous time for them, God say it's the best time for you to stretch out the hand. I'll go to this part, stretch out your hand. You know, the moment Moses stretched out his hand, what happened is the Red Sea, the huge Red Sea that was in front of him and the Israelite were then divided like a wall on the left, on the right, and they walked through the Red Sea. Meaning to say, meaning to say, listen very carefully. Point number three, very important. Bad time, God's time. Good time, best time to stretch out your hand and open the Red Sea. It's the best time for you, for the church, for people like you and I who are faceless and nameless, to open the Red Sea for the people that God put around us. Basically, you are the Moses in, point, in time like this. And you're, you have the responsibility, you have the anointing to stretch out your hand and open the Red Sea for the people who are looking up to you. Do you know what that church, during time like this, bad time like this, some people, to some people, their Red Sea is one bowl of rice. There are people who are so poor at the moment, who, who are starving, who do not have food to eat, who are thinking, where can they get the money to buy food for next week for their children? Me and few of the CYC pastors, we have been facing issues like that. People are coming to us and ask for help. Pastors, I have two children. One is just maybe five years old, another eight years old, ten years old, crying on the phone. I do not know how to buy food for them because I lost my job. I do not have a job. There are people who really need help. And do you know that moment like this, food is their Red Sea. If you could open the Red Sea for them, if you could, if you could stretch out your hand, and help people like that, you are already dividing the Red Sea for them. You are already a great help to people like that. So church, bad time, God's time, good time, and best time for you and I to stretch out our hand to help those who are poor, to help those who are needy, to help those who are in depression and living in fear. Because to some people, their Red Sea is the idea to solve their problem. Advice, good advice, right advice to help them 
to overcome their financial problem. To some people, they are Red Sea in moments like this, what we are facing right now, the pandemic and the, and the COVID-19 and all the financial crisis is that one prayer that will comfort their heart. In moments like this, for some of them, they are Red Sea. What they need is your prayer, your words of encouragement, your words of comfort. Therefore, the Lord told Moses, stretch out your hand. Church, let us really stretch out our hand. Next week is the Easter day, meaning to say we are going to remember Christ who died for us 2,000 years ago. And we all know and believe that three days after He resurrected. And when we think about the idea of having this Easter day celebration, and some more, it happened during time like this, whereby the church cannot gather together physically in physical church, but that we have to gather together in the sky church. It also means that the Lord wanted us to be in the Easter day celebration by keep preaching the gospel. It's just not to have an Easter day celebration for the Christian ourselves. It's not just for ourselves. It's, it's for everybody. It's for those who are facing the Red Sea. Let me repeat that. For some of the people that got put around you, their Red Sea is one bowl of rice. Their Red Sea is one idea to solve their problem. Their Red Sea is one word of encouragement, one prayer that will comfort their heart. That is their Red Sea. And all you need to do is to show love, is to stretch out your hand and help people like that. If you are, have been blessed by the Lord financially, it's time, it's the best time for you to help the poor, the widows, the children who are suffering in hunger. It's the best time for you to stretch out your hand and do something about it. It's not the time for us to hide and live selfishly. It's time for the church to show what Easter Day really means. It means the Lord had came and seek and save the Lord. The Lord Himself, Jesus Christ, had came and demonstrated to us how He had helped the poor, how He had healed the sick. Wire His both hands. So do you and I. It's time for us to stretch out our hand and open the Red Sea for those who are poor, for those who are in needs. Amen? Matthew chapter 25. Verse 35 to 40. Here he says, The Lord Jesus himself said this, For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty, you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous Christians we will answer the Lord saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you drinks? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you or naked and clothe you? Verse 39, And when did we seek you sick in prison and visit you? And the king, the Lord Jesus himself answered them, Truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers, you did it to me. So therefore, church, bad time, God's time is the good time and best time for you to feed those who are hungry. It's the best time for you to clothe who are naked. It's the best time for you to give drink to those who are thirsty. Because to them, all these are their Red Sea. And to you, your hand need to stretch out so that the Red Sea could be open for the gospel, for the lost, for the poor, and for the needy. Amen? Wow, I hope you are blessed. I hope you really get it. Because sometimes when we read this part, the idea of the Red Sea is like, wow, it had to be a physical Red Sea in front of us, then it had to be open right in front of us. 
。那 the whole Bible, the entire Bible consists of sixty six books, and through the sixty six books, is only recorded once about the opening of Red Sea. And yet, never happened before. Never happened after that. Of course, after that, during Joshua generation, the Jordan River also being divided. But Jordan River, compared to Red Sea, Red Sea is much much bigger and huge compared to Jordan River. But what I'm trying to say is that sometimes the Red Sea, the idea of Red Sea, not necessarily the physical Red Sea in front of you, but the idea of Red Sea being open through your both hand. Is to help the poor because it's their Red Sea. Is to help those who are hungry because it's their Red Sea, and that's why God put us here as a church during this moment of pandemic and crisis to show the power of Easter, to show the power of our dear Lord Jesus Christ, who is going to open their Red Sea through your hand. Amen. If you believe that, give the Lord a big clap. Hallelujah. Amen. Wow. And lastly. The Lord said to Moses, in the very same verse, chapter fourteen, Exodus fourteen, verse sixteen, He said, "Lift up your staff." Say with me, "Lift up your staff." Lift up your staff. What is this point? Point number four. This is the best time to rely on God, because when God told Moses to lift up the staff, the staff that Moses lifted up are the power of God. Is anointed by the Holy Spirit, and in order to divide the Red Sea to open up the Red Sea, you need God's power and miracle to do that. In other words, bad time, God's time, good time, best time to rely on God, to rely on Him. His staff simply means your heart is to rely on him, to look upon him, because his power will not just open the Red Sea for those who are poor and needy, but that when you rely on him, he will also open the Red Sea for you. Amen. He will open the Red Sea for you financially, your marriage, your future, the church, the Connect Group. What you need to do. Is to obey and listen. You need to obey God. If Moses does not obey God, the Red Sea will not be open. So therefore, obedience is very important. When you read the Bible, did you obey God's commandment? Did you preach the gospel? Did you help the poor? Did you stretch out your hand? Did you pray for the lost? Did you pray for your spouse? Did you pray with your children? Did you pray with, with, with your family? Did you pray with your pastor, with your church members? You need to obey his words, because Paul says, "Do not cease praying. Obey him. Listen to his word, and not only obedience, but also surrendering your rights." And in Moses' hands. It's all God's rights. It's all God's power and authority. So if he hold on to his own power, if he hold on to his own idea, he might think, "This stuff. What can this stuff do? Is it when I lift it up, the Red Sea will open? If he think like that, then nothing will happen. The Red Sea will not be open. Meaning to say, if you hold on to your rights so tightly, then." Nothing will happen. It's not that God doesn't want to listen to your prayer. It's that in order for God to move and open the Red Sea for you, you need to surrender. You need to lift up God's stuff. You need to rely on God because relying on God simply means surrendering yourself and become obedient to His way. When you rely on God, God will open the Red Sea for you. Isn't that what you are praying for? Isn't that what you are hoping for? If that's what you are praying and hoping for, for the past few weeks, then lift up your hand, lift up your stuff, and rely on His power and rely on His Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Are you blessed so far? So today, the message is very simple. Just four things. Bad time, God's time, good time, best time. Best time to be, number one, bold and courageous. Be like the Levite scupper, faceless and nameless problem solver. Someone who really bold. And then number two, is the best time to move forward. Is the best time to lead. Is the best time to have reverse thinking in your mindset. And number three, is the best time to stretch out your hand and help those who are needy and poor. Because it's the best time for you to stretch out your hand and open the Red Sea for the people around you. Every one of them have their own Red Sea. Therefore, your role is to stretch out your hand and help them in moments like this. And number four, it's the best time for you to rely on God to lift up your stuff because that simply means relying on His power. The Red Sea couldn't be open without relying on God. It's the best time for your family, business, your ministry to rely on God. Because she will do something great in your life, in the church, and in the marketplace. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Let's worship Him. Let's worship Him. For I believe that the Lord is with us this morning. And He, he wants to talk to you. He wants to touch your heart. He wants to really lead you to become like the Levite's couple. Be bold and courageous. Hallelujah. Let's worship Him. I'm reaching for your heart. You hold my life in your hand. Drawing me closer to you. I feel your power in you Nothing compared to this place Where I can see you face to face I worship you in spirit and in truth Come Holy Spirit Come Holy Spirit Fall on me now I need your anointing I need your anointing Come with your power I love you, Holy Spirit You captivating my soul And every day I grow to love you more Come, Holy Spirit Come, Holy Spirit Fall on me now Hallelujah. I need your anointing come in your power. I love you, Holy Spirit. You captivating my soul. And every day I grow to love you more. I'm reaching for your heart. You hold my life in your hand Drawing me closer to you I feel your power in you Nothing compared to this place Where I can see you face to face I worship you in spirit and in truth I'm reaching for your heart I'm reaching for your heart You hold my life in your hand Drawing me closer to you I feel your power in you Nothing compared to this place Where I can see you face to face I worship you in spirit and in truth I worship you 
I worship you in spirit and in truth. I worship you. I worship you in spirit and in truth. Come on, church, let's pray in the spirit for a moment whenever you are right now. Pray in the spirit, pray in the spirit. Hallelujah, by faith, let His Holy Spirit move in your heart. Let Him drive you forward. Let Him give you boldness and courage. Let Him give you revelation, give you a new anointing to stretch out your hand and to help the poor. And that you have the faith to rely on Him, to rely on the stuff that He put on your hand. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, pray right now. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, cast out all the fear in our heart, cast out all the, all the, all the negative thoughts and mindset in our life. Oh, hallelujah. Let us be bold and face our problems. Let's be bold and face all the crises. Let's be bold and face all the challenges around us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. We need you. We love you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm reaching for your heart. You hold my life in your hand. Drawing me closer to you, I feel your power renew. Nothing compared to this place where I can see you face to face. I worship you in spirit and in truth. I worship you. I worship you. In spirit and in truth, I worship you. I worship you. In spirit and in truth. For some of you or those of you who wanted to respond to this morning sermon, that you know the Lord is speaking to your heart. Some of you really need to rise up and make the call. Be bold and courageous in all the things that you are facing right now. Some of you have been trying to run away from problems, try to hide in the problems, try to escape from the problems. You know what, church? It's easy for us to sometimes to run away from challenge, to run away during bad time like this. But when your eyesight is being turned by the Holy Spirit, when you begin to see bad time in God's time is good time, and also the best time for you to rise up as a devoted and strong Christians, then you will start to realize that running away from problems will not solve the problems that you are facing. You will then start to realize that all you need to have is to take courage and face the things in front of you. Sometimes if you need to cut loss, you just need to cut loss. And it took courage for some of you as businessmen to cut loss. It took courage for you to admit, Lord, I have failed this time. It took courage. It took courage for you to admit that you are weak so that you could rely on the Holy Spirit. It took courage for you to be like the Levite's couple to rise up to the challenge and fight back. You may fail now. And this time, the pandemic and the financial crisis may defeat you financially or physically. But let it be known that our Lord Jesus Christ is the Lord who resurrected from failure and from death. Let it be known that when you live boldly, to face what you are facing, the things that are in front of you, then you will, you will start to discover that the Lord will give you a new strength and energy to stand up from where you have been defeated. The Lord will give you energy to stand up from where you have failed. From the place that, that make you felt weak 
the Lord will lift you up once again. Through courage, through boldness, the Lord will show you all you need to do is to rely on Him. And for those who know that the Lord is speaking to you that you have been blessed all these years. You have been equipped well, both spiritually and physically. Now is the time for some of you to rise up to the call and stretch out your hand to help those who are in need, to help those who are poor, to preach the gospel, to stretch out your hand and to open the Red Sea for the people around you. Because some of you are starving. Some of them, not some of you, I'm sorry. Some of the people around you, they are starving. They are in desperation. They, they are in depression. They need your help, church. It's time to show love. Time to let the power of the Holy Spirit move in your life and move through your life to bless people around you. Amen. For those who wanted to respond this morning, be it the first category or the second category, and if there are new friends here, non-believers, I encourage you to respond with us also, accepting Jesus Christ in your heart. The Bible says, just confess with your mouth and believe with your heart that Jesus is your personal Savior, you will be safe. It's just simple like that. So for those who wanted to respond, no matter where you are right now, just place your hand like a, like a bowl, like a cup of bowl, so that the Lord will pour His new anointing and Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit, onto your hand whenever you are right now. I pray in the name of Jesus. Receive a new anointing in your life. Receive the bonus and strength. Holy Spirit, be with them. Be with them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For those who need bonus, receive that in the name of Jesus. For those who need to move forward, receive the courage and revelation to move forward, to become a problem solver and take up the leadership in your life. For those who wish to help the poor, who have the ability to help the poor, those who are in need, in the name of Jesus, receive the anointing of helping the weak, helping the poor, and preach the gospel during moments like this, during Easter day. Thank you, Lord. Be with them. You know, dear Lord, for those who wanted to accept Jesus as their personal Savior, receive the love of Jesus in their, in their life, in your life right now. Receive the love of Christ. All you need to do is just to say, Dear Jesus, say with me, Dear Jesus, I open my heart, I confess with my mouth, and believe with all my heart that Jesus, you are my God. That Jesus, you are my personal Savior. Forever, I will follow you. Forever, I will worship you. Forever, I will serve you. Protect me. Pour your love on me. Guide me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Bless those who are responding to you right now. I'm reaching for your heart. You hold my life in your hand. Drawing me closer to you. I feel your power. Really receive that. Nothing compared to this place where I can see you face to face. I worship you in spirit and in truth. I worship you. I worship you in spirit and in truth. I worship you. I worship you. In spirit and in truth. Thank you, Jesus. Accept our prayer of offering and worship. Bless us, Lord, during time like this. Let us be known. Bad time, God's time, good time, best time. 
Lord, thank you, Jesus. There's no bad time in your eye, Lord. It's always best time to do something for you. And it's always best time for you to do something in our life. It's YC versa, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Bless us. In Jesus' most wonderful name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a big clap. Amen. And congratulations to some of you who have accepted our dear Lord Jesus Christ just now by following me to say the sinner's prayer just now. And I want to encourage you, no matter where you are right now, no matter you are the church members or the new friends, new Christians, please stay connected with the church. Stay connected with FGACYC. We are willing to help you. We are willing to connect with you. Log on to our Instagram, Facebook, FGACYC or subscribe to our YouTube channel, FGACYC. From time to time, we will update you and we hope to bless you more and more in days to come through the Sky Church. I love you. Jesus loves you. God bless. Hi guys, thanks for checking us out and I believe that God has spoken to you personally just now and He has listened to your prayer. Amen. And please subscribe our FJCYC YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. Turn on your notifications so that you would be updated from all the contents that we have posted. At the same time, please share around with your friends and people around you. The idea is not to get viewers, don't get us wrong, but that we want you to share the good news with the people around you. Okay, so hopefully we will see you again. So see you next week. God bless you.